Um, hello, everybody. Uh, Richard gave me um, a very brief summary of what he wanted me to do. He wanted me to come up here and do a terrible job, represent the media. Um, what a bad gig. Uh, in five minutes, luckily, five minutes. Is, I, I'm very conscious that you're five minutes away from a drink, so uh, I'll concentrate on that. Um, I just wanted to say a few words about two things. Um, how exciting this this stuff is, how exciting the last five years in technology have been, um, and yet how little, the cult, from what I've seen as, as a parent and a, as somebody who reports on this occasionally, how little the culture in the education system has changed and how, how difficult it is finding it to respond to. I mean, I started covering this area full time, I was a business correspondent before, about five years ago, um, and if you think, one of the first stories I covered was, and I, I was there when Steve Jobs pulled out the first iPhone from his pocket, um, which uh, we were mo I was mocked for for holding it as somebody had wrote in the paper as if it was a piece of the True Cross. But um, <laughs> I do think that was an extraordinary moment in in technology, and everything that's happened since then has kind of, has been transformational in all sorts of ways. When you think we're not just the touchscreen revolution, the tablet revolution, uh, products like Kinect bringing, um, th in effect, what used to be a $100,000 3D scanning technology into homes at, uh, at 100 quid or so. This incredible revolution in the way we use computers that only dates back five years or so, um, from having uh, become accustomed to a keyboard, uh, a monitor, and a mouse, and that was the pattern, that all suddenly being swept away. But also, the democratizing force that we've seen that have over the last five years, um, in all sorts of areas, in the obvious kind of Arab Spring political uh, way, uh, through to the workplace, where people are coming in and, and not taking what their IT department hands to them, but saying, hey, I've got better technology at home than I've got at work, and I want to use it. Um, to schools where, again, uh, in my experience, children are coming in uh, with much better use of and access to technology at home than quite often they're getting at schools. Um, I have seen some very encouraging and exciting things in the educational uh, area uh, covering technology over the last five years. Um, I went to Nigeria about three years ago to see the One Laptop Per Child uh, project, which was, in, in that rather wonderful video, um, I think was built around the whole um, philosophy of constructivism. Uh, so children in a Nigerian school that didn't have uh, power and didn't have water, uh, learning how to use these laptops and then learning how to mend them when they, when they broke. Uh, and then taking them home and teaching their, their parents how to work them. Um, in this country, uh, a, uh, a man came to see me about 18 months ago uh, at, at the BBC and, and pulled out this tiny device, a USB-style device, um, and said, I want to give this to every child in the country and teach them to code. And I put a little video, I got my, my phone out, took a video of it, put it on YouTube, and 800,000 people viewed it. And that was the first time uh, we'd seen the Raspberry Pi. And I've been hugely excited by how that's developed. Um, I've been into schools and seen the ex extraordinary excitement generated by Code Club, which somebody mentioned earlier, and getting 10-year-old um, uh, girls and boys uh, in equal numbers um, making things um, with, with, with great enjoyment, going to an after-school club, which they didn't have to be at, and, and, and really being enthusiastic about it. And um, I've seen uh, autistic children having their access to education transformed by the use uh, of an iPad. So all that has been tremendously exciting and encouraging. But at the same time, I look at um, the messages I'm getting from schools about the culture there, both from my own children who've been through the ICT experience and seen how learning Microsoft Word and, and PowerPoint is not a particularly enjoyable way of spending a few years, and, and from hearing from lots of teachers. 
Um, and I'm, 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 I'm getting the idea that very little has changed in schools, that uh, there has been a revolution in terms of ICT uh, as a subject being uh, recognised to be poor uh, and the government having thrown it away, but nothing new in place. And the worrying message I'm hearing from schools is that a lot of head teachers are saying, um, well, we can forget about ICT. Um, that is uh, no longer important, rather than, you know, how can we change it and how can we bring uh, something new in? Um, to the media, uh, we obviously have uh, an important role in this and um, uh, a very negative role in many ways. The, 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 the media attitudes to both technology and uh, education in general um, have been extremely conservative with a small c, from uh, Facebook gives you cancer to um, video games will make your children uh, go out and kill people. I'm, I'm very conscious that I've found it very difficult uh, over, even over the last five years, to, to sell a positive message about the way technology uh, can be used in schools. But then again, we have seen all sorts of bad examples over the years of the integration of technology into schools. I go back all the way to uh, my school days when language laboratories were the, were the new revolution. Uh, were installed in, in, in my school and six months later the door was closed and uh, the machines sat there um, and were never used again. To write up to the building schools for the future uh, experience where uh, some of, certainly some of the early schools spent a fortune on um, uh, the wrong kind of kit, didn't, didn't really uh, have the autonomy and, 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 and the skills to learn what kind of uh, uh, technology they should be investing in. So there are real issues there. And I think there's also a continuing issue about children's relationship with technology. Um, we, uh, we have got to a stage where uh, it is incredibly easy for them to turn on, uh, immerse themselves in it uh, without getting uh, an intimate relationship with it, without you know, understanding how it works. Um, cautionary tale from my own experience, I've got two Raspberry Pis uh, and I've got a 14-year-old son. And at the weekend, I, I sometimes yell upstairs, Rufus, come and help me with my Raspberry Pi. And he says, I'm too busy playing League of Legends. Um, uh, so you can, you can uh, have an evangelical mission about changing uh, uh, children's attitude to technology, uh, but uh, it won't necessarily work. Um, just in conclusion, I see, no, I see no reason for this change that we've been going through over the last 10 years, for this pace of te technology, technological change to slow down. We are going to have to uh, accept that we're going to ha have to keep on um, trying, dipping our toe in the water, immersing ourselves in, in, in these new technologies and, and seeing what works and what doesn't work. But the main conclusion I, I, I've had from my conversations with teachers who contact me and from listening to you uh, this afternoon is the huge importance of, of uh, investing in, in the teaching rather than the technology. Um, much of the, the, many of the best examples that I've heard of uh, have come from inspired teachers who've, who've spent nothing. Uh, one teacher got in touch with me last week who'd launched a... Uh, a Twitter retelling of the gunpowder plot, uh, uh, tweeting the gunpowder plot, which had kind of inspired his school and lots of others. That's just uh, one example. Um, and I do believe that inspirational teachers, and there are a, a core of them out there, not enough, uh, can, um, can take us... Uh, to, a, to a, a better use of technology. I think one other thing I would say from um, listening to you and from listening to the profession over the last five years is there is an enormous lack of data, a lack of measurement of what works and what doesn't work. And as a journalist, um, that is very unsatisfying. We're told that there are these wonderful schemes. We have yet to see very uh, much evidence of what they're actually achieving in schools. Anyway, thank you very much.